So I think it's safe to say that Macs are in no way, shape, or form the perfect machine. They of course do not come cheap, and most of the time that expensive price tag does not get you the best performance. Now I know what you're thinking, just build a PC with similar specs. Well sure, but me along with many other people prefer the design of Mac OS and its simplicity. Being someone who's fully sucked into the Apple ecosystem, I choose Mac OS over Windows any day. This of course is where Hackintosh comes in. When building a Hackintosh, you could take your existing PC with compatible hardware and have it run macOS. In this video, I'll be going through some challenges that I faced while building my Hackintosh and how I found ways around them. Let's get started. I built this PC not too long ago. My 2013 iMac that I had been using prior was getting kinda slow and I wanted to take a step further in gaming and move off console. I still bought another SSD with it just to put macOS on in order to replace my iMac. However, I did not do research. The primary thing with Hackintosh is you need to do research to make sure your parts are compatible. The main issue with my machine was that I was running an NVIDIA RTX 2070. Now don't get me wrong, this is a great card for gaming and it was serving me very well while playing Fortnite and many other games. I was averaging very high FPS and I figured it would be a really great powerhouse for the Mac. I didn't do research and I realized macOS dropped support for NVIDIA cards in macOS High Sierra. So that means not even the 2070 will work in High Sierra because RTX cards weren't even supported back then. Since then, I've been looking for ways to try to get around that and still use my NVIDIA card so I don't have to buy a new graphics card. Unfortunately, I could not come to a way to get that to work, so I ended up having to buy a graphics card. I came to the conclusion that the AMD RX 580 is a pretty decent card, and since it's natively supported in macOS, it works perfectly out of the box. I built my PC on a 750 watt modular power supply, so adding another graphics card wasn't a huge issue. I was able to get everything up and running and boot into Windows. Now when you install two graphics cards, Windows will treat both of them as different displays. So you can either use them with two different displays or just use one graphics card at a time, which is what I did since the RX 580 isn't really well suited for gaming. I just went into display settings and ticked the option where it says show only on display 2, which was the one that the 2070 was outputting to, and it worked just like that. I just select display port since that's connected to my 2070 and I get the Windows UI. So now comes the actual hard part, getting macOS to install and boot. To do this you need something called an EFI folder. An EFI folder contains all your boot information. Since you're not installing macOS on a legitimate Mac from Apple, you need to add certain tools to tell the computer what to do. Now this isn't a guide on how to create an EFI as there are plenty already out on YouTube. When I first set up my Hackintosh, I used someone else's EFI that had a similar build to mine. The main thing you need to look out for are kexts. Think of them as little drivers that allow certain parts of your computer to be recognized by macOS. Again, if you would like a full video going over EFI folders, leave a comment down below. Once you go through the standard process of creating a macOS install USB as you would for a real Mac, you need to mount the EFI partition of the install USB. This can be done with a variety of tools. I used one called Mount EFI and I'll leave it in the video description. From there you just want to drop your EFI folder and eject your USB. Now you're set to boot from the UEFI partition of your USB. And if all went well, you should have a fully working Hackintosh at the end of it. Now, that's just the software aspect. There's also some other hardware that you might need while building a Hackintosh, for example a Wi-Fi chip. The motherboard I'm using is a Gigabyte Aorus Z390 Pro Wi-Fi. Now while it has Wi-Fi in the name and it does support Wi-Fi in Windows, macOS does not actually have support for this type of Wi-Fi. You actually need to use a Wi-Fi chip that was built into one of the older Macs in order to have Wi-Fi capabilities on this Mac. Same thing with Bluetooth. Now you could still use a Bluetooth dongle that just plugs into the USB port in your computer and it'll still give you full Bluetooth capabilities if it's compatible with macOS. However, I'm still using a wired connection because I haven't gotten a Bluetooth dongle yet. So you absolutely need that Wi-Fi card in order to get Wi-Fi capabilities on your Hackintosh. Otherwise, you can just use your onboard Ethernet port to get some internet from an Ethernet wire. If you don't have an Ethernet port in your room or wherever you're situated, you can use your Mac to turn on internet sharing. So you just plug one end of your Ethernet cable into your PC and one end into your MacBook. If you're using a MacBook with a Thunderbolt 3 port, you need an Ethernet to USB-C adapter. And you can just plug it into the side of your Mac and turn on internet sharing. And make sure you're sharing your connection from Wi-Fi to whatever your computer is using. My other computer is using the adapter. So it's a Belkin USB-C LAN. Uh, yours might say different if, you don't, if you're not using the adapter. You can get an active internet signal once it's plugged into your Mac. So there you have it. Those were most of the challenges that I faced while building my Hackintosh. So moral of the story is just do your research. It'll save you a ton of time when you're trying to get it set up and you're trying to boot into it. If you want me to do a full video going through how to set up an EFI and more details how to set up a Hackintosh itself, please leave a comment down below and I'll share to make but one. But yeah, that's going to pretty much do it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.